Hey, what's going on Raider Nation? Welcome to another video for the Black and Silver Way again. Uh, two videos in one day. Uh, I was just chilling on the couch right now and uh, I got a text message from a, uh, a Raider, you know, homie that I have and uh, he sent me Derek Carr's press conference and Josh McDaniels and said, hey bro, I think it'd be a good idea for you to do like a live reaction or something to uh, Derek's press or if you haven't seen it yet. I told him I hadn't seen it yet and here we are. I have it pulled up on my PC here. Uh, we'll see what Derek says on this. I'm pretty interested right now. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's watch this video together. If you guys haven't seen it yet, uh, let's let's roll it. I have obviously skipped past Josh McDaniels. Really give a fuck right now what he has to say. Derek, this obviously isn't where you guys expect it to be at this point in the season. Do you have any explanation for just where this team stands right now? Um, you know, I can't speak for everybody. I know where I stand, and I love the silver and black. I'm going to give it everything I can every time I go out there. And uh, I can't speak for everybody, um, you know, for every man, um, what's going on in their head. But I can tell you what's going on in my head, and I'm going to give it all that I can every single time. Derek, I'm going to ask this with the utmost respect. Last year, with what you did with this team, with everything you guys went through, and you endured and got to the playoffs. This year, it just seems there's frustration at times, obviously, after these losses. Is there, in any way, a disconnect with what you're trying to do and this new staff as far as the system? I, you know, I don't think so. Um, you know, I love, I love Josh. I love the car. I love our coaches. Um, they've had nothing but success, you know, way more success than I've ever had, you know. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry. Derek, um, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. Continue. To finish that, I'm sorry for being emotional. I'm just pissed off about some of the things. You know, that a lot of us try and do just to practice what we put our bodies through just to sleep at night. And for that to be the result of all that effort pisses me off. Pisses a lot of guys off. It's hard knowing what <clears throat> some guys are doing. Like I said, just to practice what they're putting in their body just to sleep at night. Like just so we could be there for each other. <laughs> and I wish everybody in that room felt the same way about this place. And as a leader, that pisses me off. If I'm being honest. Derek, obviously, the, the game started a little slow, first quarter. And then those, those, it seemed that those couple of defensive plays by Amik and, and Max really seemed to kind of bring the team up. It seemed, and the offense immediately went down and scored. But obviously, um, later in the game, it couldn't, they couldn't quite maintain that. How do you explain the, the difference between how it started and the energy they had after those defensive plays? It definitely helped us, um, you know, them getting the ball out. And all that, uh, it was it was good for the momentum, right, for the sideline, because uh, we in the first uh, the first quarter, you know, we were killing ourselves with penalties for really the first quarter and a half. Penalty, I mean, second and thirties and stuff like that, you know, um, that, that hurt us. Um, I didn't see the replays on them, so I don't know, you know, what it was or anything like that. But I just know that it hurt us. And uh, but having those plays really fueled us, helped our sideline, and uh, you know, I'm happy we made those plays because it got us going. Derek, with your comments you just made a moment ago, I'm going to ask you a question, not as a quarterback, as a captain. If you have guys on that team that maybe you don't think are giving maximum effort or buying in or whatever, those are my words, not yours. How do you address that? Mm -hmm. How do you do it nine games in? Well, we had, uh, you know, we had our leaders. And it's not, 
it's not even like something crazy, but it's just, you know, we had our leaders address it man to man just now. And it was good. It needed to be done. It needed to be said. And, uh, you know, I think for me is I'm always going to just show the way. I'm going to show the way. Show them what it looks like. You know, show them how hard it is. You know, in the huddle, I told them that in the second quarter, I said, it's going to be hard. But we're going to come back and we're going to win this game. I believe it, you know. It's going to be hard, though. It's not going to be easy. You got to do the hard things. Josh always preaches, do the hard things right. And I'm not perfect. I'm never going to be perfect. But the love that I have for this place and the effort that I give will never be second to none every time. And so they addressed it. We addressed it. It's not a problem. It was addressed. It was good. But I think the emotion of just nine years of stuff <laughs> hit me today for how much I really love this place. And it's not going to change anything. I'm going to come out here. I'm going to fight. I'm going to compete next week. And that's what I'm going to do. Uh, there's six losses by one score, within one score, which, you know, the the narrative is always it's one play here, one play there. Does it include everyone from your coaching staff on down? Like, that's a lot of losses for one score that say just it's like a play here. Yeah, I mean, we, we all take accountability. I take accountability. Um, you know, like I said, I'm not perfect. Like, there's so many plays. I don't know whether completions was, but one of the ones I missed, you know. Like, take a look at those. You know, the one that they freaking trip. You know, as I'm throwing him the ball down the field, like, like that can't, can't happen, you know. And so, I, you know, we all take accountability. And, you know, the NFL is one score games all the time. And, uh, and so we got to learn how to, this team has to learn how to finish those. You know, like you said, there's been so many of them. Six, you said, right? Um, and you, you flip all those and everyone's feeling good about it, you know. And I feel great about everything, you know, but um, – you know, that just isn't the case, but it's on all of us, you know, but, but for me, I'm going to speak for myself and I'm going to come in and take my coaching from Josh. He'd be hard on me like he always is. And I'm thankful for it. And we'll keep going forward and all that. You know what I mean? And uh, I think if everyone takes that mindset, that's where you get better. Derek, uh, I promise I'm not preying on your emotions. Here. You're good. Uh, but the same frustration you're having in terms of that care or lack thereof from your teammates when you're walking off the field and hearing the reaction of the fans, I'm assuming you obviously understand their frustration as well and maybe not taking it too personal. Oh, yeah, I never take it personal. I'm, I'm just the one that's been here the longest. <laughs> you know, uh, I had some older players that were here longer than me say, don't worry, it'll be your turn someday too. Jog off the field. I was like, oh, yeah, well, that stuff happens. I'm not... I'm mad at it, too, so don't worry about it. Thank you, Derek. Appreciate it. Wow. Really uh, powerful, emotional reaction. Um, it's just, this is insane. This is just crazy. To see Derek cry um, like that and... Uh, really express his concern about the team not being bought in as much as him and how much he respects the organization. It's heartbreaking, bro. Because at the end of the day, I had Derek's back all the way to last season to the point where I was like, okay, I've seen enough. I want a different player. But even at the point of me saying that, I always will have the most respect for him just because of the way he carries himself all throughout the years. Um, do I think we should still move on? Of course, I really do. Um, that's really what I think. Uh, do I? I got love for Derek, and you know he's a Raider. Went nine, you know, nearly nine years with us already. So it's just really unfortunate. Shit did not work out, and I, I just think when he keeps talking about these players not being bought in as much as him, and not these leaders said like snap out of it to these players. When players are not bought into a system or into an organization, it comes from the top. So that's got to fall on Josh McDaniels, the coaching staff, ownership, uh, before Derek. Before Derek could even be a part of that whole thing. Yeah, we could talk about Derek's play during those key moments, of course. We already all know that. That's the issue with Derek. But at the end of the day, uh, that was sad, bro. I nearly teared up. Almost teared up on that one. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this press conference, man. There's a lot of emo he showed a lot of emotion. Um, obviously, talking about players not being bought in. 
and just talking about how he loves this franchise and gives it 100%, but this is, this is horrible, man. This is horrible. Anyways, um, you know, I just wanted to give you guys that reaction. That was a very, very powerful, emotional press conference with Derek Carr. I'll see you guys on the next one.